Welcome back to Face the Nation. We're joined now by the two leaders of that new House Select Committee on China, Congressman Mike Gallagher and Raja Krishnamurthy. Welcome to the program. Thank you. You have your first hearing on Tuesday. What is the message you both hope to send with it? Well, first, let me say how excited I am to work with Ranking Member Krishnamurthy. He is a hopeless Bears fan, but he is smart and clear-eyed when it comes to the threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party. And in addition to elucidating that threat, I want to send a message that the committee's work is going to be bipartisan. Speaker McCarthy wants to be bipartisan, and I firmly believe that besides its own people, what the Chinese Communist Party fears most is the idea of Republicans and Democrats working together to counter CCP aggression. Mm -hmm. Well, the question is, can you maintain bipartisanship? The vote to, to create the committee was bipartisan, concerns bipartisan, but this spy balloon incident, things got very political very fast. How do you manage that? Well, I, I echo uh, the chairman's sentiments, and though he is a Packers fan, I, I, I am glad to work with him. Um, look, I think that you're absolutely right that the spy balloon incident quickly became political. And, um, you know, unfortunately, some folks on the other side took it as an opportunity to bash the president uh, uh, with regard to the Chinese Communist Party, even though, on the whole, I think he handled it very well. Um, Mike is right that. You know, the Chinese Communist Party likes nothing better than to have divisions between Democrats and Republicans. In fact, their chief political theorist, a guy named Mr. Wang Huning, has said that this is a huge weakness in America, that Democrats and Republicans don't get along. Mm -hmm. And so we have to get over that um, to be effective. So help me understand the purpose of this committee, because you have the House Foreign Affairs Committee, you have the mm -hmm. Intelligence Committee. This committee was particularly focused, as I understand it, on the Communist Chinese Party threat, mm. including here in the U.S. So what is the extent of the activities here in the U.S.? I know you, Congressman Gallagher, have been looking at police stations, mm. Chinese police stations on U.S. soil. Well, I think the Chinese spy balloon incident uh, illustrates perfectly that this isn't just an over-there problem. This isn't just a matter of some obscure territorial claim in the East China Sea. This is a right-here-at-home problem. This is a threat to our sovereignty. So yesterday, uh, I went with uh, a, a committee member, Democrat Richie Torres, to the site of one of these CCP police stations in the heart of New York, being used to harass and surveil Chinese dissidents. We then met with a group of Chinese students on American campuses that have been subject to harassment and, in some cases, physical assault. So we may call this a strategic competition, but it's not a tennis match. This is about what type of world we want to live in. Do we want to live in Xinjiang light, or do we want to live in the free world, where we're free from fear, free to speak our minds, and free to choose our own future? Xinjiang, you're referring to where there are concentration camps for Muslim minorities in China. Um, when you talk about those police stations, 54 overseas police stations, according to the Spanish-based Human Rights Watchdog. So help me understand. How, I mean, the State Department says they don't like this. The FBI doesn't like this. How is that possible that this is on U.S. soil? Well, unfortunately, there are certain um, nonprofit organizations that the Chinese Communist Party has used to uh, try to do espionage and to crack down on Tibetans and Hong Kongers and Uyghur and Uyghur activists. And we, I'm very living glad. Living in America. Living in America. In fact, my State of the Union guest was a Uyghur activist whose family has been imprisoned in China because she is speaking out against the genocide against Uyghurs in China. But one thing that I really want to bring uh, to everyone's attention is that uh, just at the same time that we are very concerned about the CCP going after Chinese origin people here, we have to make sure that in our conversations about Chinese origin people, we don't engage in any stereotyping mm -hmm. or questioning people's loyalty. Uh, one of my colleagues, unfortunately, attacked uh, Judy Chu, the first Chinese American congresswoman in the United States Congress, saying that somehow she's not loyal to the United States. I find that offensive as mm -hmm. an Asian American myself. And um, I want to hear Republicans also echo that sentiment that I just made, because we have to make sure that in our conversations in the committee, we stay out of xenophobia and we make sure that we mm -hmm. keep the focus on the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, um, this was a bipartisan agreement to create the committee, but House progressives voiced concerns because of what you just said. The vice chair of the Asian American caucus said they fear it'll feed into bigotry. So how do you stop your work from being distorted? Well, I, I'd like to say that I, I'm hoping that uh, the chairman will echo my sentiments with regard to Judy Chu and the mm -hmm. attack on her. We can't go that route. Again, the Chinese Communist Party loves it when we are internally fractious 
and they like it when we are mm -hmm. stereotyping. Um, we have to avoid that, and we have to hold the Chinese Communist Party available, uh, uh, accountable for specific activities and deal with those. I think he asked you to call someone out. <laughs> well, let me say, we should not question anybody's loyalty to the United States. I think that is out of bounds. It's beyond the pale. If there are concerns about a specific organization, and as a matter of fact, the China Council for the Promotion of Peaceful Reunification is, in, is tied directly subordinate to the United Front Work Department at the CCP, then we should work with our colleagues to apprise them that they might be targets for CCP United Front Work, CCP influence. Mm -hmm. As a former counterintelligence officer, I can tell you we are a soft target in Congress, but absolutely. We shouldn't question anybody's loyalty. And going forward, I think what's critical, and the reason we actually got the committee renamed to focus on the Chinese Communist Party, is to constantly make that distinction between yeah. the party and the people. And the people are often the primary victims of the CCP's aggression and repression. So I read in the National Review <laughs> that you are going to require all of those testifying to disclose foreign ties, not just to the Chinese Communist Party, but um, given how extensive the ties are in the business community, that there is really no difference, according to U.S. intelligence, between the state uh, and the Chinese um, business community, everyone's going to have to disclose this. I mean, how do you reassure people that this doesn't steer into Joseph McCarthy territory? Well, I, Joseph McCarthy is from my district. He's buried in my district. We need not exhume his body and reanimate it. Uh, and I've written to the extent of we must constantly be aware of going uh, overboard uh, as we try and win this competition. Uh, with China. Uh, that being said, there are disclosure requirements similar to that for most committees for testifying. Our bar is slightly higher given the nature of our work. I'm confident we can work through the complexity, but you're right. I think what makes this competition more complex in many ways than the old Cold War is we never had to contemplate selective economic decoupling with the Soviet Union because our economies didn't interact. This, in my mind, as sort of a military guy, is the most difficult area of competition. But we have to safeguard our own economy and make sure that we're not unwittingly financing genocide or PLA modernization. The PLA is the, the Chinese military. So is it true you're calling in the NBA commissioner to testify? Uh, we're hoping to have a conversation first with the NBA, with Disney, other companies that uh, my constituents and others have voiced concern over. We haven't issued any uh, announcement about hearings besides the one we're having on Tuesday night. But I think we can have a productive conversation with companies that have substantial business interests in China. And we want to make sure that the power of the Chinese economy is not seducing certain companies into betraying American values. I, I, can I just jump in? And you have in? subpoena power. We do. Will you use it for corporations? If we need to. I think if we want someone to testify and we believe their presence is essential to the committee function, okay. I want to do it in a bipartisan fashion. Okay. I think at the heart of this committee, we do not have a quarrel with the people of China. Yeah. The, the differences that we have are with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And indeed, many of our businesses have ties with mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese economy. We're some of the most intertwined economies in the world. The, the challenge for our committee, indeed our country, is how do we continue to engage uh, the People's Republic of China, but at the same time protect ourselves, our values, our interests, right. and our alliances with our partners and friends and, and, and others in the re Indo-Pacific region. And I imagine your issues with Disney and the NBA have to do with things like changing messages to censor things that can't be said that are critical? Is that it? Sure. Well, the NBA incident, I think, caught a lot of attention because here you had a, an NBA executive who merely tweeted support for Hong yeah. Kong protesters. And remember, these people, in many cases, were out in the streets waving American flags. So they looked to us for leadership. And then the NBA quickly moved to silence that. So we just want to make sure that American companies are acting like Americans and embracing American values like like free speech and plurality and and things like that. So that's that's the concern. Uh, Congressman uh, Christian Borthy, um, I know that when you got back, Congressman Gallagher from Taiwan, you issued a statement that was pretty scathing in terms of a backlog, you said, of weapons to Taiwan. Um, do you consider there to be sl slowness on the part of the administration or is this more of an issue with private industry um, just having such supply chain constraints right now. I think it's a little bit of the latter. I think under the Biden administration and on a bipartisan basis in Congress, under the National Defense Authorization Act from the last Congress, we, did, we took unprecedented steps to provide uh, additional armaments under the Taiwan Relations Act, mm -hmm. under which we are obligated to provide articles of defense to Taiwan. But we need to do more. Because what we know is that the CCP, as you said in your last interview with uh, 
uh, CIA Director Burns, uh, is wants to have the capability to successfully invade Taiwan by 2027, if not sooner. Mm -hmm. So that means we have to arm or help supply Taiwan's defense uh, even more rapidly than we are right now. For instance, by working with private industry to unwind supply chains, introduce more com competition uh, into, the, into the mix to allow for smaller businesses and entities to provide more agile yeah. and nimble supplies of armaments. But the bottom line is, we've got to hustle. Uh, because at the end of the day, we want to discourage and deter aggression on the part of the CCP. So you're, you're saying your intentions here are um, coming from a genuine place. The concern for poly policymakers sometimes is that they get boxed in by politics. <laughs> sure. You know this. And everyone running for president in 2024 is going to vow to be tough on China. So how do you, how do you actually get something done in a space that's going to become really, really hot? Well, I think we can identify uh, sort of the bipartisan center of gravity on China. Listen, we're not naive. We're not going to agree on 100 percent of everything. And there's going to be meaningful disagreements within all the 2024 contenders. But I want both sides in some way to look to the committee as the area for the most forward-leaning, innovative, and bipartisan policy and legislation on China. And I think there are things we can do. When it comes to clearing the backlog, that's a bipartisan issue. It predates the Biden administration, right. mm -hmm. to be sure. But I emphatically agree with what mm -hmm. Raj said about if we want to prevent another collapse of deterrence across the Taiwan Strait, then we should be working to give Taiwan the resources and asymmetric mm -hmm. weapons they need to defend themselves. So I think we can be effective Absolutely. in that regard. So two questions. You want to hold a hearing in Taiwan, I read. <laughs> Is that going to happen? And can you get TikTok banned as you both are trying to do? Who goes first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be it, technically you could do a field hearing in a, in a foreign country. So, uh, you know, I, I've been to Taiwan. I think it's valuable for members to go there. I'm hoping to uh, bring a bipartisan group at the, at the appropriate time. Um, and perhaps we could do a, a field hearing in Guam on the way back. Uh, but again, we have our first hearing on Tuesday. We're going to pass rules the morning of. So we got to crawl a little bit, then walk, and then maybe we can run with our, our fancy mm -hmm. field hearings afterwards. Is this the year TikTok gets banned? Um, I don't think it's going to get banned. I think what we're asking for is, you know, TikTok is owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company that's required to provide its user data, including on the 140 million Americans, as well as control of algorithms mm -hmm. to the Chinese Communist Party upon request. All we're saying is, if TikTok is going to operate here, yeah. don't have that user data and algorithms controlled by an adversarial regime. Understood. We'll be watching your hearing on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen.